In this segment, we're going to look at the simplest use of landfill gas or biogas, which is direct combustion. So we've got our landfill gas or biogas in a pipe from our landfill or our digester. And the easiest way to use it is just to burn it after pretty minimal pretreatment and apply it for different heating technologies. So this is the oldest technology that's been used. It's only been used since about the 80s, though. Um, it requires minimal treatment, so particularly moisture and particulates um, and potentially siloxanes would be removed. Um, siloxanes are polymers with a silicon backbone that end up creating these crystals inside different appliances, so you often don't want them going in. Some technologies are more tolerant to them though. So with this heat, we can be heating water in a boiler, heating air in a furnace. Um, we can be treating um, sludge or leachate in a dryer or evaporator. We might be doing an industrial process such as a kiln for cement or lime. can also be used in infrared heaters. So all these ways that natural gas could be used, you can often use biogas or landfill gas as well with some modifications. Um, in the picture on the slide here, there's a picture on the left of a leachate evaporator. So instead of treating their leachate, they're just um, drying the water off of it and dealing with the solids. And then beside that, you can see the flare. So any facility that's doing biogas or landfill gas utilization is going to have a flare as well as a utilization appliance, just because you need to be able to destroy that gas if your utilization appliance um, has to be taken offline for any reason. You need some way of dealing with it without loading all that methane to the atmosphere. Here's a local example of landfill gas utilization with direct combustion. This is mentioned in the Ministry of Environment's 1982-1983 annual report, so pretty old technology. Um, so the best pipe company is now receiving methane gas from a closed landfill site, that's Kitchener Landfill, to provide fuel in its boilers for production of concrete pipes. Another example um, is a more recent one, and this is outside Twin Creeks Landfill in Watford, Ontario. So in the map, uh, you can see on the left is a really big landfill. This is operated by Waste Management. It's one of Ontario's biggest landfills, so a lot of gas potential there. And then on the right, you can see really, really big complex of greenhouses. So there's actually 40 acres of greenhouses there. And in the picture at the bottom, you can see what it looks like inside. So they're able to really effectively use that gas to heat these huge spaces in the greenhouses. And because they're um, located next door, they're able to do that. So this is one of the uh, key requirements of a direct use application is you need to be located close to your user or else you're going to spend a whole bunch of money building a pipeline, which would be economical in situations, but the longer it gets, the less economical it is. So if you can locate close and you have a heat user, this is when these direct applications work really, really well. When the gas is being treated, I mentioned moisture, uh, particulates and siloxanes would need to be removed. For moisture removal, um, there's a few approaches. Some common ones are a coalescing filter. So this is a device that takes all the droplets of water that are suspended in gas um, and helps them to coalesce into drops where they come out of the solution. Um, another solution would be a chiller. So this is lowering the dew point by changing the temperature and that causes moisture to come out of solution. Just like your dehumidifier you need to remove the water from, that's what a chiller does. For particulates, um, you might use a cyclone, um, such as we've talked about using cyclone for water and grit separation. You can also use it on air to separate particulates out, or you might use a filtration system. And lastly, for siloxanes. So since you might have heard less about siloxanes, on the left you can see some pictures of these crystals that form from siloxanes on the spark plug on the top and on a turbine blade on the bottom picture. Um, these can be removed with absorption or adsorption technologies. So these will pull the siloxane out of the gas stream and then fix it into a solution or a solid adsorbent, which might be regenerated or just thrown out and replaced. Now, 
where heat can't necessarily be used in a single user right away, um, a really good way to use heat is in a district energy system. And district energy is not specific to waste heat. You could have a coal-fired district energy system, a gas-fired district energy system. Um, the key thing with a district energy system is you have all these uh, heat users and generators networked together and able to really efficiently use um, sources of heating and cooling. And these systems can be from a few city blocks to like hundreds of kilometers, the largest ones. Um, the university, for example, has a central heat plant which heats all the buildings. Um, that's an example of a district energy system. So you can apply these on very large scales and things like uh, landfill gas and biogas and waste incinerators are frequently um, sources of heat that can be integrated into these systems. And this is something that will apply in the next unit as well to combined heat and power, but it's, it's one way that um, waste can plug into that big network of um, the energy system on the technologies that produce heat is district energy systems.